Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the argument from the resurrection of Jesus. Honestly, I didn't originally plan to even address this one, because I have a pretty dim view of historical evidence in general, and that's what this argument amounts to. See, all historical evidence that's more than a couple hundred years old consists of claims by writers, and people are notorious for being dishonest when they make claims. Still, I eventually changed my mind when someone pointed out to me that historical data is still a piece of evidence, the same as the things we see, hear, or smell, and that we shouldn't immediately discount it without good reasons, in the same way that we wouldn't immediately discount what the waitress says about what sodas are carried at a restaurant. Both are testimonies, but both are still valid evidence. Anyway, this argument is inductive, which means that specific samples are used to arrive at a general conclusion. If God raised Jesus from the dead, then it follows that God exists. So then, the question becomes, did God raise Jesus from the dead? There are, in fact, some historical documents from both Christian and non-Christian sources that provide evidence in support of this conclusion. Lucian of Samosata, for instance, mentioned the resurrection specifically. However, much of the evidence for the resurrection comes from early Christian sources. After all, if you believe in the resurrection and are willing to write about it, there's no good reason why you wouldn't become a Christian. A large number of Christian sources talk about the resurrection, but usually the ones that are referred to by historians are the four Gospels, each of which was written by a different person, in a different location, and each of which confirms certain things about the death and resurrection of Jesus. In fact, there's a lot of overlap on that point, which is extremely rare in historical documents from that time period. It's not common to find ancient documents that corroborate each other at all in that way, much less four separate sources that all concur on certain key points. In any case, it's telling that even at this day and age, when many historical scholars seem to be actively trying to undermine the credibility of the Gospels, most scholars in this field agree about three main points. First, that after the death and burial of Jesus, his tomb was found empty by some of the holy women who'd followed him. Second, that many people saw Jesus alive again after his death, even together in groups. Third, that the disciples of Jesus believed that Jesus had risen from the dead, and in fact they believed it so strongly that many of them went to their deaths for preaching about it. If these three things are true, the best way to explain them all is that Jesus, who told people he was God, was telling the truth. New Testament history isn't really my field, so I'm not entirely prepared to defend these claims exhaustively on historical grounds, but there are a few common objections which can be addressed in favor of this argument. Objection 1. The Gospels were all written by Christians, which makes them biased sources. Reply. Remember, we're talking about a time period in which very few people could read. People didn't usually write things down unless they thought they were important. What I'm saying is that back then, every source was biased in some way, so discounting the claims of a historical source on that basis doesn't work. Besides, when historians judge whether a specific claim made by a specific source is reliable or not, they take these sorts of things into account. Sometimes, as in the case of the stories about the empty tomb, where the tomb is discovered by women rather than the disciples themselves, a testimony is such that it would be embarrassing to the people writing it. In that case, it's much more likely that they were telling an embarrassing truth faithfully rather than making up a story to embarrass themselves with. Objection 2. The Gospels were written much later than is usually believed. Reply. The latest dating that I've ever heard for any Gospel was 170 AD, and that was by a person who quoted no sources and hadn't, as far as I can tell, published anything. Actual scholars usually place the last written of the Gospels, that would be the Gospel of John, at around 90 to 100 AD, if not earlier. But even if the unprofessional dating of 170 AD had been true, the Gospels would still be much closer to the events they recount than most historical documents from that time. Take the earliest biographies of Alexander the Great, for example, which weren't written until over 200 years later. Early versions of the Quran were even further removed from the events they chronicled. However, as it happens, there's plenty of evidence that all four Gospels were completed by the end of the first century AD, and may even have been written sooner after the life of Jesus than we thought. In any case, this isn't a good reason to reject a historical source. 
Objection 3. The Gospels weren't written by eyewitnesses. Reply. First, there is no good reason to suggest that the Gospel of John wasn't actually written by St. John. There are, at best, other theories about who wrote it, but none has the same degree of support behind it as authorship by John does. However, even if the Gospels of Matthew and John weren't written by the disciples themselves, so what? Almost no history documents are written by eyewitnesses, but we don't discount the documents on that score. Therefore, this isn't a good enough reason to reject the evidence. Objection 4. Before leaving Jerusalem, the disciples just conspired together to make sure their stories were the same. Then each wrote their story while they were on the road. Reply. Well, of course there's no evidence to support this, but let me just ask one thing. Why? I mean, if Jesus didn't really rise from the dead, and the disciples knew this, why would they go to the trouble of staging an elaborate conspiracy, writing stories that agree with each other, while traveling to various locations, preaching, and eventually go to their deaths for the truth of those claims? The fact is, this kind of theory only works if we assume that the disciples had some kind of plan for things to turn out the way they did. Did they? Did they peer into the future and see that they'd all become famous founders of a church that would last for thousands of years? If so, then that's a miracle, and therefore God exists. If not, then this objection collapses. In fact, even if the disciples had been able to see the future, it's very unlikely that they would have given their lives to build a legacy that they knew was founded on lies. It just doesn't work. So, God helps to explain how Jesus could rise from the dead, which is evidence that God exists. Next time, can the beginning of the universe teach us about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.